Hello, I'm Dr. W. John Martin. I'm in a pretty remarkable location in Southern California. Remarkable because of the natural water coming up from a deep well. This water has the activity we've been looking for in a natural source. I've been activating water for some years now using a variety of added compounds that can be filtered out if necessary or using various devices. But it's so nice to see water equally active coming straight out of the ground. Why this is important? I had a recent article published which I'm happy to um, share with as many people who will be interested. A remarkable extension of the concept of stealth adapted viruses. As some of you know, I describe these viruses primarily as viruses which evaded the immune system. They had lost the components that are normally targeted by the cellular immune system. What I had noted before was that there were also cellular derived sequences and bacterial derived sequences that had come into the virus as if substituting for some of the lost original virus sequences. This process is pretty fascinating when the cellular sequences can convey information from the virus, probably causing illness, and the bacterial sequences can probably provide the protein covering of the viruses. What I didn't have the data from earlier, but over the years have accumulated it, that some of the viruses come from the monkeys which were used to produce polio vaccines. They were originally the rhesus monkeys and later African green monkeys. What became obvious that some of the incorporated sequences, cellular sequences <coughs> that are retained in these viruses infecting patients are in fact monkey cellular sequences. Specifically, we've had three viruses or three cultures from patients who had the chronic fatigue syndrome using the polymerase chain reaction to get a glimpse into their DNA structure we noted a fairly large product that we could sequence and look for um, its origins. The data came back that it was a sequence from a rhesus monkey normal cellular um, DNA. This was fascinating but even more fascinating, two other cultures that had some similarities but from totally different patients had essentially the same sequence with some mutations characterizing the two different cultures. We went ahead further with those other two cultures and sure enough, there were other cellular sequences from rhesus monkeys and some sequences that are now human in our region as if the monkey sequences had exchanged themselves for the corresponding sequences in our normal cell. Now this is pretty remarkable information. This says that we have, through the use of making polio vaccines in monkeys, allowed monkey cellular sequences to enter into the human genome. These sequences can then induce diseases in and of themselves, but the more important the initial message, what it means is so many years ago when I started this project, way back in 1986, I wanted to look for viruses in illnesses such as the chronic fatigue syndrome. The basis that I would look for the viruses was to see if the viruses could cause cellular damage, as viruses can do, if I culture cells and as a pathologist look at the cells for signs of damage. Some of you know this work when published in 1995 was controversial because I said the viruses had come from African green monkeys. Other people didn't want to hear that. That meant that there was an unknown source of contamination from polio vaccines made in African green monkeys. Other people have looked time and time again for sequences in 
uh, chronic fatigue syndrome patients, their approach has been to understand that conventional viruses have very uh, defined markers. They have certain characteristics and one can look for those viral characteristics but they came up negative. The difference now is I realize that the viruses can switch from their conventional markers so they're no longer a reliable way of looking for the virus and they can switch to the cellular markers and therefore not be detected using typical viral detection mechanisms. Now the reason I'm here is because the answer to this problem is to enhance the energy levels of the individuals to fight off these stealth adapted viruses. And what is immediately available is to move forward with the clinical trials using what I refer to as KELEA, K-E-L-E-A, activated water, and see how effective these simply being close to activated water can be to help suppress stealth adapted viruses. I'll be happy to communicate with individuals about this research. I can be reached by email wjohnmartin at ccid.org. Thank you very much.